because uh, one simple way uh, to really look at corporate governance is the existence of the practices of the company or the way the company performs its business having a board and some senior management committees and all with an intention to protect the interest of the shareholders that's the major part of corporate governance the processes the policies which the company has set in place in such a way that every action the company takes is in the interest of the shareholders but on one side the shareholders typically want the share price to keep going up and up and up whereas the risk management though it is contributing to the increase in the value of the firm it is something associated more and more with the calculated risk taking so how do these two things go together what is it that is really required to ensure that there is a good coordination between these two aspects is what we will look at and today the reason why these two need to be integrated or these two need to be looked together is in a lot of high profile corporate scandals we see that the risk management practices as well as the corporate governance practices both of them are really being completely misused so when you look at majority of the financial scandals that have uh, occurred either the misleading information has happened to the board right correct information not given in the case of bearings a single trader the profit positions the profit of the various positions has not been communicated to the senior management correctly so the board is provided with misleading information whatever the kind of mechanisms the information the technology that is typically uh, being used to communicate the information to the board even that is a faulty system which is again an operational risk kind of an area majority of uh, majority of the financial scandals that came out they involved financially engineered products which are very complex and uh, the board could not have sufficient knowledge to understand and appreciate the positives as well as the negatives of those products so majority of the times we see complex engineered products created and the economic risks that are behind it only the positives have been uh, promoted by the financial engineers to the senior top management ignoring the negatives and the risks that are inbuilt into those kind of products and because of all these reasons obviously there is a pressure on the board as well as the management to implement the risk management practices effectively with so much of innovations happening in the world of finance it is becoming utmost necessary that the board and the senior management have a good understanding of the world of risk management of the world of finance to a large extent it, there is an immense pressure that is getting built on the regulatory and the rating agencies because one of the reasons for the 2007 failure has been the rating agencies which do not have which did not take enough uh, which did not have enough knowledge in terms of how to rate the asset backed securities or the collateralized debt obligations which were the new financially engineered instrument that came at that point in time the inattention and the incompetence earlier they were simply ignored but now they are getting equally punished which means now the board cannot escape saying that this is completely unaware to us we don't have the knowledge in this particular process only this particular trader or employee has done this entire process board cannot escape because now with the socks compliance coming up 
the it is the responsibility of the ceo and the cfo to typically uh, sign on the financial uh, t- t- undertake that they are kind of responsible for the numbers that are shown in the financial statement which means it is becoming a necessity today to understand finance even for the non financial person the inattention and incompetence today are punished as de- as a deliberate act only and for majority of the organizations the outcome of this entire scandals is the risk analytics department came up which is primarily responsible for evaluating coming up with the models on different kinds of risk identifying uh, uh, identifying the historical data doing some kind of uh, calculations and evaluations on the historical data come out with uh, models and frameworks which can really help an organization uh, to go on proactive mode with respect to the risk management and when i try to integrate these two worlds just if we look at it on a broader sense the board of directors whose main intention is to work on behalf of the interest of the shareholders along with that they should be really sensitive to the other stakeholders like debt holders as well and on an overall scale their main job is in terms of overseeing the management and holding it accountable whenever they are deviating from the interests of the shareholders that is the major objective of the board along with that obviously they do some they because of the expertise they do carry they contribute to the development of the overall strategic plan of the firm now as a part of the strategic plan the core component from the risk management framework is the risk appetite to what extent the company is capable of taking on the risk and set the risk risk tolerance limits for every business unit for every department and be alert on the agency risk whenever we talk about the agency risk it's a kind of conflict of interest that arises between the management and the shareholders and the different stakeholders what is this conflict of interest the management can implement its own policies its own processes which can really benefit them rather than the stakeholders but the board is majorly responsible to make sure that the 